Hey up YouTube, it's March. But you know what happens in March? New seeds. The sowing season cat starts. So we're gonna sow a few things. Now, there are gonna be some caveats on some of these things, as they were before. Um, but we're gonna sow a few things, we're gonna talk about a few things. And That's gonna be doing a lot of things. Yeah, so I'll see you in a sec. Hey guys, right, in fact you, you can show them the seeds. Okay. So, sowings of March, now, like I said, there's some caveats here. Some of this stuff I'm sowing, like these guys, show them to the camera, tomatoes. I'm not sowing all my tomatoes yet. Do you want to go, show them, just show them different pictures while we're talking. I'm not sowing all my tomatoes yet, I'm going to sow some. Um, the reason I'm doing it that, that way is it's, is it's early. It's, it's, it's early for tomatoes. Now I've got a propagation tent with lights and heat. My favorite. Whilst these will germinate just fine on a windowsill, I don't have a south facing windowsill. So if you've got a, a windowsill that gets good, strong light, but not too much, it doesn't get too hot, then, then you could put there. you could put tomato seeds there now. If you don't have that opportunity, don't think, don't panic. Tomatoes will be more than happy shown in April and they will catch up more than enough. Yeah, a lot of people swear that they sow, they sow tomatoes in April and they get better yields in April than they do if they've sown them in March. Do take into account with all these seeds, your final frost dates. Now I'm sort of central England not the Midlands, but I'm Central England. We're Up north, late. it wants to be a little bit longer. Down south, a little bit earlier. So, you know, please do factor in your final frost dates. Now, my final frost dates are around end of April, early March. So, I know from experience that I can sow tomatoes now inside and they will be strong enough to go into an unheated greenhouse or polytunnel, probably still in a seed tray, however, not in their final position, but they'll be strong enough to go out in about four to five weeks and they'll be able to withstand anything that the polytunnel or the greenhouse can't hold off. So do bear that in mind. Other things I'm going to sow a few of today, I'm going to do some cucumbers. Party We've got time. party thyme and green fingers. I think they're both a um, snacking cucumber, a small cucumber. Um, so yeah, we're going to put some of those in today, but once again, I'm not sowing them all. I've only got 10 seeds here. So I'm going to put in two or three of each. Moving on. We got some sweet peas. Some peas. These are sweet peas. Hey guys, listen, I just want to take two seconds just to say, if you're enjoying this content, this uh, seed sowing video, and you like to see more of my vlogs and my experience, my failures, it's all shown, please do subscribe. If you enjoy it, press like. If you don't enjoy it, by all means, press dislike. But I challenge you to let me know in the comments below what you dislike, and I will try and fix it for you. So I'll get back to the sowing. You can be doing your peas now. And you're not too late for your broad beans. Sow them direct at this time of year. Sow your broad beans direct. They need, they, if, if you put them in modules, that's fine. They will germinate, they will come up. But then you'll check them, what they call check them, when it comes to planting out into their final destination. And what that means is it, it stunts their progress for a week or two. You don't want that. You're right at the end of when your suitable time is for broad beans. Next up, we're making a bit of a mess here. I had all this nicely organised. Next thing we're going to sow is we're going to put some parsnips out. It's not a very interesting packet, I grant you. But these are tender and true parsnips. And I'm, I've got two locations prepped out, direct sow parsnips. You can chit them on, toilet, on, on paper towel if you really want. 
but direct sow your parsnips. So don't they don't want to go in modules, they don't like being transplanted. And what else have we got? This time of year, you can direct sow your radish. What I'm going to do is mix a little bit of radish seeds in with my parsnips. Parsnips take a very long time. You sow them now, it'll be winter when they're ready. Rosa, please don't, you're making the camera wobble. Sow them now, mix them in with your parsnips, and then when you pull these up, sow them sparingly, thinly, but then when you're pulling these in about six weeks, it forces you then to thin your parsnips. So a little bit of inter sowing, and I do mean in with, mix the seed together. And then once also, these are uh, Bulgari's Rezu Lincoln leeks. They're a thinner leek, I believe. Um, your leeks as well, you can be get, getting your leeks in now. You've got March, April really to get your leeks in, so you can be starting them now. What I'm going to do, as you already have seen, I've done a sow in the beginning of Feb, a sow in the end of Feb, and then I'm going to another sow in probably end of March, beginning of April, hopefully to give me a small amount of leeks continually through winter, but they do freeze quite well. Leek and potato soup is one of my favourites, yes. And the one thing, mm -hmm. I remember that we made a video on how to make like a carrot tape or toilet paper. We did, we're going to redo water. that this year. We're going to do that, redo that again this year because the carrot tape works really, really well. Um, and I think we can, we can do a better job of it this year. We've got better cameras and better sound equipment, haven't we? So mm -hmm. I think we're going to redo that this year and you girls are going to help. But it's not just about vegetable seeds this time of year, you can be starting your flower seeds. Am I boring you? No. <laughs> if she's yawning, I, I dread to think, I'm sorry guys, if you don't like it, let me know. <laughs> flower seeds, so these are some mammoth sweet peas. I started my sweet peas off before Christmas and as such, I'm not gonna be sowing anymore this year. Sweet pea seed keeps quite well. This packet's got about 200 in it, so they're going to go into storage. You cut yourself? No. Okay. You all right? Okay. So we're going to crack on with some seeds. As you can see, I have actually found, when I was stacking or unstacking my gravel trays, I found that one was bigger than the rest. And the Dowding 60 cell has actually fit in it. There's not a great deal of room to get water in down the sides, but I'll make do. And I'm going to fill this 60 cell with beetroot. Well, I say I'm going to fill it. Rosa! I've got a little helper. We're going to set, we've set up a second camera and Rosa's going to help out today. So I'm going to sort of show you the beetroot seeds and then she's going to finish the tray. And I'll probably insert it somewhere around here of her doing the beetroot for me. So we're going to shake the seeds down because these seed packets don't have another little packet inside them. And I'll show you the beetroot seeds. They're actually very easy to handle. Very good for kids. You all right? Okay very good for kids they're like little spiky balls okay so they're like a brassica seed but they're they're of a decent enough size to be able to pick one up and pop it in a cell and it's as simple as that pick it up pop it in a cell and then what we're going to do is we're going to get some extra compost and sprinkle it over the top all right, can you see what I'm doing, Rosa? Popping one in the middle, just giving it a little poke so it's just going into the soil. I'm not burying it. It's just going into the soil, all right? <laughs> so you're going to take the rest of this seed packet and fill up this tray for me, aren't you? With choggier beetroot. <laughs> With this little makeshift table that we've made, made for you. Get yourself sorted and we'll get you, get you on film, girl. 
circles. Yes, without spinning around in circles and falling on your arse. Okay, off you go, girl. You're on film. Do you want something to pour them out into? Would that make life a little bit easier for you? Yeah. Would it? Okay. So if we get this and, and then spin, spin that round, pop that there. Spread it all out. And voila, there you go. I've done that row. All right, so you need to go from there and make sure you go that way, go up and down and up and down like a snake, all right? Okay, guys, moving on. Now, I've purposely, I say I've done it, Charlotte and Rosa did it, chosen the big um, deep root trainers for this. And this is for the tomatoes. The reason I've done this is because it's April. No, it's not April, it's March. Because, no, it's not March. March. It is March. <sighs> Do you know? <sighs> um, yeah, the, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want to give them loads of time to be able to be in here. And we are going to sow just a, a, a bit of an assortment. Because um, these really are the sort of early sowing experiments. I still want, what have we got, one, two, three, four, five, and I've got five different types here. So I've got a tomatillo that I'm putting in, and I've got tigerella, rosella, orange queen, and tiny tim. Now, my main crop that I'm going to be sowing tomato-wise this year is San Manzano. No, I've buggered up here. Sorry, guys, I'm not sowing them in these really deep trainers. They're for the cucumbers. I'm sowing them in the ones that I had decided I was going to saving for the sweet corn. And that's, this, uh, that's these ones, these really deep, probably four inch, three to four inch deep root trainers. Um, room around the side to get water in, they'll go in my tent just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one row of each of the random varieties and then I've got three rows left, I think, for San Marzano's. So we'll crack on with tomatoes. There's nothing fancy to do with tomatoes. All you do is pop them in and they want to be around about a little fingernail deep. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to go get my dibber. Back in a sec. And to, like I said, tomatoes couldn't be, couldn't be simpler. I'm going to do them 10 mil deep. Just means they'll take a little bit longer to come up. And we're just going to use this dibber. I'm going to put a hole in the middle of the cell. Yeah, Rosa's doing the beetroot. She's not got to rush. She can take her time. And I'm just going to go 10 mil deep with this little dibber. You could use the back of a pencil, back of a pen, anything. Well, I've got a dibber, so I use a dibber. If I can't find a dibber, I use a pen. What you do need to do, when I'm, well, or what I need to do, or what Charlotte needs to do, because Charlotte's going to help with the tomatoes where Rosa's doing the beetroot. Mm. Or do you want to help Rosa? Uh, I'm Rosa's going to, Charlotte's going to do tomatoes. Okay. Is we need to make sure that one seed goes in every hole. So do you want to start? there with the orange queen and do one row of orange queen and then we'll go, move, we'll go from there i'll start the other side so just, one row. just one row of those yeah
Like a tomato, but they're not a tomato. What? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you know what family does the tomatillo belong to. There's no Latin name on here, which is normally a bit of a giveaway. But let me know in the comments below. So the tomato is actually inside the green papery shell. Pop these down here on your table. Table. Oh yeah, table So, last but by no means least. Oh. Well, you can't eat the seeds. No, you can't eat the seeds. Well, you can eat the seeds, but they won't give you anything. They won't do anything for you. Cucumber. We could do with finding something actually, because I'm only going to use these six cells. We could do with finding something to fill these other six, other six cells up with. That. Oh. See, no, so that, what should? That ain't six. That's nine. Nine. It is. <laughs> but I'm only going to fill these. I'm only going to sow in these six. So we want to find something to put in these three. Mocking cucumber. I've only got two packets of cucumber seeds. How many are there? There's only five seeds in each packet, and I want to save some for later in case they fail. <laughs> Hi, Sash. <laughs> I don't know. She's not, not going to hurt anything. Back in a minute, we're going to find something else to sow. Never Give me a sec. Never fear, we've come up with an idea. I was going to go for an early sowing of runner beans. Scrap that, and we're going to put some sugar snaps in. Because we all like sugar snaps, don't we? Oh, hell just eat and throw it on yeah. the packet. I wasn't going to do any peas this year. I'm fed up of pea moth. But for sugar snaps, you never so notice them, yet. do you? Because they're inside the pod and you just eat it. So, we're going to go with some sugar pod, sugar snaps. Where I've got planned, I might actually be able to... I might actually be able to construct some sort of cover for it. But... We're going to start with some cucumbers and we're going to go three, three and then the rest peas. Now cucumbers, I believe I, I said in the last video, anything that's a long flat seed like that, so squash, cucumber, melon, try and sow it on its side about an inch deep. No, sorry, not an inch, that's far too deep. About 10 to 15 millimetres deep. Three times the width, three times the depth, of, three times the width of the seed. Now it is going to be a little difficult having cucumbers and peas in the same pod. So where I'm hoping these root trainers will come into their own because you're able to get right inside the bottom and push the plug out from the bottom. That's that's the major. Tony C. Smith spent ages in his video that was about 10 minutes long talking about shoving his finger in holes. That's what these are for. Um, but he's come to the same conclusion as me. He doesn't like the Dowding cell trays, which, you know, anybody who has the same conclusion as me being a Yorkshireman, I can't argue with it, can I? Next one, green fingers. These are the ones that I bought. These are definitely a snacking cucumber. I'm not doing gherkins this year. I've done gherkins every year and I've pickled them every year and I just can't get my pickling recipe right. If you if you if 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 you've got a good pickling recipe, let me know in the comments below. And I might get me hands I might be able to get my hands on some gherkin seeds. 
and we'll sew them. But at this moment in time, I haven't got any and I have no intention of doing them. I'm just doing straight up cucumbers this year. They may even go at home and not come down the plot. They may just, they may just grow at home in the greenhouse at home. Did I remember to show you the greenhouse at home the other day? In the other video? I need to double check that. I'm not sure that I did. I'm just going to go grab my tape before I forget to, to label this up. Now, I'm not going to take credit for this method of labelling. Nigel from Muddy Boots, he's done it for years. And I sort of dabbled with it a little bit last year. I just wrote on the pots with a chalk pen, which worked great. Um, so the first one was party time. And then the rest of the cells are going to be sugar snap peas. Now you could soak these overnight if you wanted to. It wouldn't hurt anything. I'm not going to. And I'm just going to pop them in about a fingernail deep. Middle of the tray. Now once again, the reason I've sort of chosen to use these deep trays now is it will give the, the seed plenty of time. So if the weather turns, I've got the space to be able to keep them. And these pots all have plenty of room for the plant to develop in. So that's why I've gone with what I've gone with. I'm going to order some more of these root trainers. I'm not going to order any more of the Dowding. I, I don't like it. But the uh, these root trainers, thing is, and a lot of you did spot off the, the last video because a lot of you did sort of message me or comment. Getting something from container wise at the moment is very difficult. It's a small family run business, believe it or believe it not. And it, 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 that doubting tray took off for them, it really did. Um, but it has meant that they're struggling to keep up with orders. I have found a little tip going onto the site on a Monday seems to be the time when they're accepting orders. That's when I got my order in. I'm probably shooting myself in the foot there because I'm going to be going on on Monday and ordering some more. But, you know, anyway. So, next job is going to be the uh, parsnips and the radishes out in the beds. Just going to uh, interject for a second here, guys. I mentioned in last week's video that I'm going to give that box of seeds away to one of you guys. I'm sorry, I'm going to redact that. I'm not giving it away to one of you guys. I'm giving it to the Free Seed Collective. The information is on this on the screen here. Please do go and check them out. And I do encourage you, if you've got seeds left over, seeds you're not going to sow, send them over to them. It's a big help. I'll get back to the video. Okay, so parsnips twinned with radishes. Really simple process. All I've done is I've loosened up the soil on this on this bed. Um, I am also going to do some out in open ground, but this is easier to film in. Not too sure how well they're going to do in here, because I've got a feeling that the ground directly underneath this might be a little bit too heavy, too solid. But parsnip seed does not keep. If you've got it and you want parsnips, use it. So all I'm going to do... And see the parsnip seeds, they're not small. And I'm just going to go down and I'm just going to sprinkle them in as thinly as I can. But I'm not worrying about it too much. But you definitely don't want to single sow. Germination on parsnips can be sketchy. So broadcast or sprinkling is generally the better way to go. Now your parsnips, like I said, will always have funny germination and they do take time to germinate. Like I said, the parsnips require a very long season. So sprinkle them on, cover them up, and I'm gonna show you a trick in the open soil bed 
to help you keep an eye, especially if your soil is like mine, to help you keep an eye on where they are. So I promised you a little sneaky hint on sowing your parsnips outside. And it's this, compost, spent or otherwise. I don't have any spent. But all I'm gonna do is as I did over there, light sprinkling. And then instead of putting the soil back over the top, what I'm now going to do is just cover them with compost. And that differential color between the compost and the soil will help me to keep a track of where the parsnips are. String lines also help, but if you don't have access to that, I find this works quite well. You could also cover them with sand. That would work just as well. <sighs> well, that's gonna be it from us down on the plot today. March is a testing time for us as growers. It's testing your patience. It really is a difficult time of, of shala shanta. Um, if like me, uh, you woke up on Saturday the 6th of March and you took to take your missus to work and the cow was covered in frost. It's a stark reminder of what can happen in March. Exercise caution. If you want to sow things early, by all means, but be prepared. Don't sow 100% of what you've got and be prepared to re-sow in April because there's plenty of time. Don't panic. There will be another sowing video in March. There is so much to sow throughout the month and in an attempt to try and practice continual sowing or continual harvest and small crops throughout the year there will be a lot of my content over the coming months will be repeat sowings in the hope that if like me you struggle to maintain a crop all year sort of i'm, I'm three four call it four or five years now into allotment growing and I do struggle, I genuinely struggle, you know, I'll plant a bed of cabbage and then when that bed of cabbage is gone, it's gone. So like I said, my efforts these, this year is in three cabbage, three cauliflower, three Brussels sprouts, dedicate a bit of space to them, then some salads or some quite fast growing crops at the side of them and then three to four weeks later. I will do a second sowing of the same crops in the hope that I can get a gap between harvest to give me crops further into the year. But now is, is, the, is the exciting time and the testing time as a grower. As I've already said, there's so much you want to get out, but please do exercise caution. Be aware of when your ground can still freeze um, once that threat has passed or once you know you're within three to four weeks of that threat then you can start safe in the knowledge that you can sow your tenders like your collars your, like your tomatoes your cucumbers your melons your courgettes your squash your 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 things such as that yeah yeah that pretty much covers it so with all that being said, guys, please do remember, like, share and subscribe. Welcome to all the new subscribers. We've had a, a recent flurry. Welcome to everybody. Um, oh, if you remember, I said I was going to give away a big box of seeds. I actually found another big bag of seeds that I hadn't sorted. But I've had a change of heart. They're now not going to be given away to one of you. They are going to the Free Seed Collective. I'll try and remember to put the details somewhere on the screen here. But it's a charitable organisation that helps other charitable organisations as well as people who, who maybe want to grow but can't afford. Um, nursing homes, other allotments, things like that. It helps them by giving them availability of free seeds. They do this by donation. 
So all those seeds, including the ones that I've added, I'm going to be parceling off to the Free Seed Collective. I do hope you may follow an example and any seeds that you're not going to sow this year, I will be continuing my donations. But any seeds that you're not going to sow this year, please do send to the Free Seed Collective. Like I say, I'll, I'll try and have, while I'm doing all this talking, I'll try and have the information on the screen. But anyway, that's it from me today. It's the start of March. It's the start of the growing season. Exercise caution. Stay safe. Stay well. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you later.